One of the greatest tiki bars of all time was in Ohio. Aloha and welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. No guests tonight. It's just like old times, just you and me, alone at last. When the doors opened in 1961, Polynesian was the theme, pineapple was the flavor, Far East Eclectic was the cuisine, and Kahiki was the name of the greatest tiki bar in the Midwest. That quote is attributed to Doral Chenoweth, the grumpy gourmet. And I found that quote in this book, Kahiki Supper Club. The show is not sponsoring this. I'm not promoting it for any reason other than I think this is a great book. But I've come to find that there were regions where groups of tiki bars popped up and especially some like exceptional ones. For example, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Up north in the east, Massachusetts were a ton of bars. Of course, California, the Northern Pacific, and then Ohio. Speaking of that, there's another book called Ohio Tiki that one of the viewers sent me, put together by a guy named Jeff Chenault, who is an authority, kind of a historian on tiki bars, but he goes through and chronicles all of the tiki bars in Ohio. And if I sat here and read them to you, the whole video would be me reading tiki bar names to you, like the Cali Kai, Verone's Tropicana and Bamboo Room, Bill the Beachcomber, Headhunters, The Islander, Mermaid Lounge, Paradise Inn, Trade Winds, Outrigger Lounge. All of those sound so familiar because we hear the same kinds of names used over and over again. Pacific Pearl, The Bamboo Room, Club Zombie, Club Zombie, very nice. But while all of those bars existed in Ohio, there was one that just so next level. The building was ginormous and it wasn't simply an A-frame. It was modeled after a New Guinea meeting house flanked by twin Moai with their, their top knots on fire. Like taking it to the absolute next level. And this is in 1961. So elaborate, so far beyond anything we had seen before. It was on par with a place like the Maikai. It's easy to see the comparison between the Kahiki and the Maikai. In such examples as like the Mystery Girl, they would actually have a mystery drink ceremony where you would order this big bowl drink that served I think four people. There would be this beautiful wahini that would come out at the sound of a gong and they would space it out every 20 minutes so you don't get bored of that whole concept, you know? I was at a Mexican restaurant the other night and it seemed like there was a birthday every six minutes or something like that with these like sparklers and stuff and I was just like, Dude, what is this? Some of the most iconic imagery has come from the Kahiki. Like this photo of George Ono, the bar manager of the Kahiki with this tower of cocktails. Dig this record cover from the Beachcomber Trio Live at the Kahiki, released several years ago by Dionysus Records. It's really cool, man. And you can even hear the diners as they're dining, imbibing, chatting. Of course, all of the imagery of the beautiful wahinis that work there, sometimes praying to the altar of this giant moai fireplace. And that's the thing I love so much about mid-century Polynesian pop, is that they had these moai adorning this New Guinea meeting house. Everything is Polynesian inspired, but not necessarily ethnographically accurate. And I think that's one of the great things about mid-century tiki. Of course, the menu is extensive and beautifully illustrated. The cocktails were plays on Don the Beachcomber cocktails and Trader Vic cocktails. You can see these beautiful ladies serving up mystery blossoms. See that? Looks like a big white gardenia floating in a cocktail served in an amber long stemmed glass, not dissimilar from those that you see at Trader Vic's, probably from the same company. The Kahiki was one of those places that had a myriad of their own glassware, their own tiki mugs, their own stemmed glassware, everything from ashtrays to matchbooks to salt and pepper shakers to serving dishes. There was a dude who was hired there just to bring birds around the place. Like he was the bird guy. Isn't that insane? And as I dig deeper into the Kahiki, I keep learning more and more about this magical place. So, a viewer from the show sent me this from Hoffman Pottery, a Kahiki headhunter mug. And of course you can see that the vessel is a Moai, just like the two statues out in front of the Kahiki, as well as the signature fireplace. Now I do have another mug from the Kahiki, so this will at least give us a couple rounds of talking about the Kahiki. When I received this mug and I found a picture of it in the menu, I was excited to make the cocktail. So as I was digging for the recipe on the internet, I came across a post from the Kahiki on how to make the headhunter. Now sadly, the Kahiki was torn down in 2010 to make way for a Rite Aid, but the Kahiki still exists as a frozen food company. For this cocktail, we will be using lemons, limes, oranges, papaya juice, coconut milk, spiced rum, overproof rum, and a lager beer. All right, so let's jump into this thing. I gotta say that I was excited to make this cocktail when I found out that there was a recipe for it. Then I saw the recipe, and I was no longer excited about making this cocktail, like at all. 
coconut milk, beer, uh, spiced rum, papaya. And then I looked at the proportions. There are 19 ounces of liquid in this cocktail as per the recipe. And it's supposed to live in this thing. For comparison, a Navy Grog has about five ounces of liquid. Yeah, I don't know. We're, at the very least, we're gonna cut this recipe in half because it's just, it's ridiculous. Okay, the recipe calls for one ounce of lime juice. We are gonna cut that in half and do half an ounce of lime juice. We're gonna pour that into a glass. One ounce of lemon juice. So we're gonna do one half ounce of lemon juice into the glass. Two ounces of orange juice. So we're looking for one ounce of orange juice. One half ounce of papaya juice. Hmm. I don't know about that. And then things get weird. It said three ounces of coconut milk. So we're gonna turn that into one and a half ounces of coconut milk. Okay, that is gross. That is super gross. This is unsweetened coconut milk. Ugh, really? Dude. Oh God, it's like lumpy. Okay, I gotta wipe this up. Ugh, coconut milk. Ew. Coconut milk seems super gross. Does this goop go bad? Can it curdle? I mean, it was in a can, right? Thai kitchen coconut milk. Coconut milk naturally separates and hardens. Shake well before opening and stir before using. Refrigerate after opening. Okay, I guess it's okay. It's lumpy though. Well, okay, the instructions literally say to mix the liquor in a tall tumbler. I'm gonna do it in this thing. So we're gonna do two ounces of spiced rum. I do love Kraken if I have to drink spiced rum. This is like, this is the one. And then it says three ounces of high proof rum. I figured this is appropriate for the era, though we are gonna turn that into one and a half ounces because otherwise this is a ridiculous drink that will fit in the ice bucket. Okay, then it says to stir in to the juices and then shake with ice. Weird, right? Maybe that has to do with the coconut milk. I'm just gonna give that the old whiffaroo. Oh! I don't wanna drink this. And we still have to add beer. It's, oh, it smells bad. It's like the mix of the coconut milk, papaya. It just, it's just all of these things. And then you can smell the 151. It's like there. I don't, dude, I don't wanna do this one. I love the Kahiki. I love the building, I love the lore, I love the menu, the girls, everything that had to do with the Kahiki. But not this drink. This, this drink is ridiculous. This is a ridiculous drink. Okay, we're gonna add in some ice to the tin here. And we're gonna shake this horrible concoction. I mean, it smells better when it's cold, I guess. Ugh. Then it says to add in the lager. And I'm sure I'm gonna get all kinds of beer weirdos that are like, that's the beer you use? And yeah. First of all, I'm already a Coors man. Second of all, this is probably accurate to what they had back then. Otherwise I'll be pouring in Schlitz or Strohs or Hams, Miller. I like Coors, get off me. Okay, so two ounces of this. Oh God, I don't wanna put that in a drink though. And then it says to stir it in. There haven't been many cocktails on this show that I'm just like, dude, I don't even wanna drink this. I really don't even wanna drink this. And at the very least, I'm like, okay, it's kinda weird or whatever. But this one, I'm like, no thanks. No. Uh-uh. Ugh. It's filled up to about here. This is a half serving. It would be filled up to here if I made the full drink. And it's supposed to go in this dude. So, let's see what happens.
Oh, okay. We're gonna add some ice to fill. Who's Phil? We're gonna garnish with a maraschino cherry and a pineapple chunk, just like they did in all their cocktails. The only difference is I'm using a vintage sword uh, skewer. The Kahiki had Moai skewers that were also green. I just ordered a bunch of those because I found them on a website. So next time we do a Kahiki cocktail, we will be using the proper picks. And to be honest, I almost put a hold on this thing because I was like, dude, I don't want to do it without the proper thing. But then I really wanted to talk about the Kahiki too. So we're just going to do it. And then of course, some fresh mint. You're just gonna go ahead and give the mint a little bit of a snap, sink that behind. Add a straw from Surfside Sips. And of course, if you like these straws, you can go to surfsidesips.com, enter Breezeway in the coupon code, get a little bit of a discount and help support the Breezeway cocktail hour. Isn't that beautiful? And so from the 1961 built Kahiki in Columbus, Ohio, this is the Headhunter. It goes nothing. No. Yes. No. Huh. Okay. So. This drink tastes like nonsense. You get the acidity of the lime and the lemon. You definitely taste that. And then you get a little bit of the heat from the 151. The coconut milk, you can taste in there. It kind of smooths the whole thing out. It's like a milky, watery kind of flavor. I definitely taste it in there. And then the beer kind of lends some carbonation to the whole thing. The beer doesn't really feel like it's fighting. Like it kind of melds in there nicely. I might have been a little, I might have been a little fast to say that this was a horrible drink. Not something I'd order, I'll tell you that much. It's not, that would not be my final version of this drink. If I created this drink, I'd go, let's take a couple more swings at it. Because it's like, it's very, I don't know, it's kind of good, but then it's kind of also horrible. And then it's good again. So I, I don't know. But what a mug, right? There's something about the simplicity of mid-century mugs. Sometimes a simple form is all that it takes to elicit a response, you know? For this sweaty bastard, look at him. But I can't imagine if a bikini clad waitress with, and this is another thing that I read in the, in the book, the Kahiki book, they had the waitresses wear big black haired wigs, like so they had really big 60s bouffant. I could really appreciate this cocktail if it was served to me by one of them on a tray with the bird guy over there birding around with his birds and this giant fireplace moai and then walking in from the cold from the snow with these giant moai out in front on fire buried up to their noses in snow can you even imagine all of a sudden this cocktail gets much better doesn't it it does i mean as you get into it it's definitely more drinkable it's just weird it's weird dude you know what i forgot to do we just made this cocktail in the glass that it was served in. Ah, uh, that'll get you fucking wasted, I'll tell you that much. So can you even imagine this giant New Guinea meeting house rising up out of the snow in Columbus, Ohio during like a snowstorm and you walk in and it's warm and there are girls in bikinis and there's like a bird guy, the bird guy that was with the birds, you know? Trays full of tropical cocktails, soft Hawaiian music playing, maybe the beachcomber trio performing vibraphone music like Beyond the Reef and Quiet Village and Yellow Bird. Yellow Bird! And Shangri-La. There isn't a song more perfect than Shangri-La in like the middle of Ohio during the snow. Weird. Oh, it's like fruity, but milky, but sharp from the 151. And then like spiced because of the Kraken. This feels like a later recipe, doesn't it? It feels like a recipe that, that evolved and just turned ridiculous. I don't know. If anybody in the Kahiki business wants to weigh in on this recipe, do so in the comments below because I am extremely curious as to what in the world this recipe is. But it's kind of good, but it's also horrible, but it's kind of good. I don't know. 
Con very confusing. It's a very confusing recipe. Oh, I have seen your messages. People going, dude, I liked your set before you changed it. And I think we're all, me included, referring to this back here. I painted that with flat paint so it wouldn't be all shiny and reflective. I think that was the wrong move, but I'm not done up there. So stay tuned. Also, people are like, dude, where did the vines go? The vines are coming back. We remodeled the breezeway. There's a giant A-frame above my head right now, and I can't wait to share that with you guys. So let's stay tuned for that as well. Folks, if you would like to support the breezeway, you can join our Patreon. And for $10 a month, I will send you this incredible little enamel pin with our Jug logo on it. I appreciate the support so much. I'm not making hardly any money from YouTube. For some reason, this show has eluded the masses. I don't know, it's weird. I think it's a pretty good show. I, I enjoy it and I think some of you guys enjoy it too. If you want a quick cocktail recipe show, those shows are out there. If you want something that focuses and educates about mid-century tiki cocktails and culture, this is the only spot for it. So I wanna thank you once again for joining me on Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. If you aren't already, please consider subscribing to the channel, slap that like button like you slap the mint, and I will see you in the next cocktail episode. Aloha. Ah. Ah. Ugh. One of the greatest tiki bars of all time was from Ohio. Ohio. One of the greatest tiki bars of all time was in Ohio. Hey, down from there. Was in Ohio. Ohio. Hey, man, keep it down over there. The dog. Oh my God. What? What, did you lose your ball down there? I, dude, I can't get that. Where's your ball? Okay, I hear you. I know, I don't see it. Hey, come here, Sparks, come here. Come here, come here. Come here, baby. No more jingle jingle. What? I guess that's the Midwest, right? Ohio? Hey Siri, is Ohio in the Midwest? When I came across this flyer in, t in the year, they would bang a gong and this beautiful Wahini, where this beautiful Wahini would come out with this big pop. Hey man, quiet. Sparky. We're gonna garnish with a maraschino cherry and a pineapple. What? What was that, you don't like that? We'll be using the proper, uh, what was I gonna say? Dude, I don't even, I don't even remember. Tonight, we're gonna make the cocktail in the, Sparky. The bird guy, you know, with like the, with the birds. The bird guy. There isn't a song more perfect than Shrank. I wanna thank you once again for joining me again. Sadly, the Kahiki was closed in 2010 and then bulldozed to become a Rite Aid. And thus is, I've said it before on the show, that if you like tiki, if you like mid-century stuff, you have to be prepared to be bummed out a lot. I remember when I came across this flyer and I was looking at it and I was like, that looks pretty cool. Wait, Ohio? Who? I'm not going to Ohio. Yeah, I think in 2000, I was 23 years old. And I certainly wasn't gonna fly to Ohio to say farewell to a restaurant that I had never been to before. But if I knew what it was, dude, I would, uh, it kills me that I, I had this flyer. I knew this event was going on. But at 23 years old, you're like, what am I gonna fly? I'm gonna fly across the country to go see a restaurant close? That sounds insane. It's like they close a, a Coco's down the road, you're gonna go and see that. But knowing what we know about this now, this was a culturally significant art project. That's what I'd like to call it, an art project. But look at the event. Live from Honolulu, Don Tiki performed. The Hula Girls, my band, performed with Don Tiki at Tiki Oasis years ago. I got a standing ovation because my voice was broken. Like, couldn't sing at all. Like, could not. So it was a pity ovation, but certainly appreciated. King Kukulele was at this thing I'm seeing, and then Otto von Stroheim from Tiki News, as well as Tiki Oasis was DJing. Shag attended, Sven Kirsten attended. It was one of those things that you just, oh, I miss, I miss that I missed it. But by making these cocktails, drinking out of the mugs and the glasses that they were served in, and talking about the history of the Kahiki, 
you and I can go there together. Aloha.